Raylib is a simple game library written in C99 that is the most fun I've had in programming in a long time. It's become popular for a reason, and if you've seen my previous video, you'll remember collisions, animations, and other complex topics. In this video, I'd like to keep things simple and just get a simple window displayed in under 20 lines of code. After exploring our boilerplate, we'll stick to examples found on the Raylib website that you can run in a browser and look at the code underneath. After learning how this ball bounces, or ricochets, we'll combine our own player aiming function with that same ball as a projectile. Then, using the existing explosion animation, we'll set a timer for our own projectile to explode. And, if at the time of finishing this video I have some physics set in place, like this library I'm experimenting with at the time of writing this, we can hopefully have that explosion have some real effects on the world around us. If not, expect it in the next video. Starting with the basics, here's a basic boilerplate to get a window up and running in Raylib. First, we include the Raylib header file, make our window, set our frames per second, and draw the background. This is very similar to other libraries like Pygame for Python programmers. We import a library, define window properties, draw a background color, define FPS, you get the point. What's nice about Raylib is its straightforward procedural approach. If it were written in any other language than C, you would have to deal with an object-oriented system of classes. Instead, everything you need is a control F away in the cheat sheet. Now let's get to our first program, the bouncing ball I mentioned earlier. Making a simple ball displayed with the draw circle V function will take in a vector, which includes an X and Y position. Besides tracking position, an x and y speed is what updates the position every frame. The x is negated on a left or right bounce, and the y on a top or bottom bounce. Checking if the ball collides with the right side of the window is as simple as checking if the x position is greater than or equal to the screen width variable we used to draw the window in the first place. Checking bottom collision checks if the ball's y position is greater than the screen height. Remember with computer graphics, the Y increases as you go downwards, unlike the traditional Cartesian coordinate system. Despite this Raylib example calling it speed, the technical difference doesn't really matter at a small scale like this. Though in our overhead shooter example, we'll call them velocity X and velocity Y, as they each have their own speed and direction. After you've viewed the code on your own and understood it, we can move on to applying the same principle of negating an X or Y velocity to ricocheting off any object. First, to have a player move around, we'll define a function, player controls, that detects key events and modifies a player's x or y position accordingly. To detect collision, we can include an environment items parameter. Environment items, in this case, is just an array of rectangles. Every frame, we keep track of the original player's position, check if there's collision with the environment items after a key press, and if so, revert back to the original position. This way, the only way the player moves is if he's not running into any obstacle. The isCollision function uses the existing Raylib function checkCollisionCircleRec, where the circle is the player and the rectangle is the obstacle, i.e. environment item. The only last function we'll need is UpdateCameraCenter to have the camera always fixed on the player. Our game loop will look like this where the world and player drawing are wrapped in Relib's drawing and mode2d functions. And before all that, we'll call the two functions to move the player and keep the camera centered wherever he is. So with all that, we have something that looks like this. To get a gun or cannon to aim wherever the mouse is, we'll take some math and trigonometry. First, we want to know where the mouse is at any given time. Relib gives us the get mouse position function we'll use later in our game loop for that. For now, we're just declaring the variable. Center V will always be at the center of the screen, which is where the player is. The vector or angle between those points is how we determine where to aim. Here is the math and trigonometry part. We'll need to convert from radians to degrees and the arc tangent two function, which takes in two arguments in X and Y and returns an angle in radians. Our function macro will convert that to degrees this is because the function we use to draw the cannon takes degrees as an argument. The cannon should be wherever the player is and should be at the angle pointing towards the mouse. 
The draw rectangle with pro parameters will account for that angle. Next is using that bouncy ball from the beginning as a projectile to shoot from our cannon. We know that its starting position will equal the player position at the moment of shooting. The harder part is its x and y velocity, which will derive from the angle we just calculated. If you want a detailed explanation, you'll have to research this on your own. So for now, you'll just have to trust me that cosine is x and sine is y. We then multiply this by our own speed variable, which probably should be a macro or a global variable instead. You can see I've decided on it being a grenade. After that grenade's thrown, a timer starts and it slows down every frame. If it hasn't exploded yet, check for collisions against walls. This collision logic is a bit more complex than the bouncy ball in the beginning, and I expand on it more in a previous video. Either way, we negate the x velocity on a left or right bounce and slow it down by 80%. This simulates a real object losing velocity after ricocheting. The same is done for y velocity on a top or bottom bounce. Next is animating these sprite frames for the explosion after the timer. Since it's already done for us in the example, we can use that code into our own function iterateFrame. Despite all the arguments, its only real job is to increment the frame rec variable, which is our exact slice or frame of the image at a given time. Now, getting to the actual physics part, I've resorted to using an existing Raylib library as I mentioned in the beginning. I considered trying to make my own, but after reading a few articles, I realized it was way out of scope for a video primarily about Raylib and not math or physics. In my attempt to use this physics library, I was able to get an explosion to affect nearby circles. The animation is simplified with just two growing circles. The code is very similar to the grenade explosion and simplified because we're just dealing with circles. First is Raylib's check collision circles like before, next arctangent 2, cosine and sine for x and y velocity, and finally the physics library's add force function. That's all for this video and if you'd like to see the code, have a look at my GitHub repository in the description. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to support more content like this.